for our next step, we need to add this uh, concrete rebar group here, right? Okay, so for the concrete rebar group, so here, this is the this is the one that will form the rebar, but of course, here you have the uh, attributes, the hook, cover, and the group. So meaning, you need to add all those things, let's say, for example, cover attributes, and then uh, hook attributes, and then you have the uh, rebar attributes, and then the, lastly, the group attributes. There you go. So maybe I'm not going to use this hook attribute, but I will use hooks. So one is hook, the other one is hooks. So hooks meaning this the uh, start and end hook. Okay, so this time we can now link this. Okay, sorry, I can put it this way. We can now link this one, rebar attributes hook, cover, and then group. Oops, sorry, sorry. Cover and then group. Okay. For the, uh, for the rebar attributes, okay, so this is the thing that we, uh, we are going to put now our parameters here. So for the name, for the name, I can use only the panel Let's say this one is uh, digs. That is the name. Okay. For the size, for the size, I'm going to use the reinforcement catalog. This one. And then double click. And then select the reinforcement that you want to use so i mean in in uh, in your area you can choose whatever uh, standard that you you want to use so here i will use the 12 let's say stirrups and then hit okay and then this one is 20 okay and then link that one to the size and the rebar class i can again put one dot, dot 15 so for my rebar class there you go. So this one is my variable. Next is the hook shape, hook shape, start angle, and hook end. For the hook shape, you know that the hook shape uh, has four. See, the hook shape has four options. Zero, one, two, three, four. Right? So what you can do is, again, put a slider here. Type four. No, no. Just simply put. 0, 4. So meaning from 0 to 4, that one is my hook shape. And then that one, I'm copy, I will copy that one. That one is my uh, shape end and shape start. Okay? For the start angle, it will be from negative, negative uh, 180 to positive 180. So what you need to do is this. Just double click. As, again, uh, I can put here... Uh, negative 180 that that to 180 so there you go so meaning this one is minimum is negative 180 to 180 so uh, negative 180 negative 135 negative 90 negative uh, 0 and then so on okay so but the thing here is if you if you move on the slider if you notice here 162 so it's a bit difficult to Let's say I want 45, so it's a bit difficult, right, to put in 45. But in the number slider, it's also good for you to know that here we can right-click and then edit the snapping. So for the snapping, I can use here negative 180, enter, negative 135, enter, negative 90, enter, negative 45, enter, 0, enter, 45, enter, 90, enter, 135, enter, uh, is it 180? Yeah. And then click OK. So look what will happen. Here, I can easily snap that one. See, 135, 190, 45. So there will be a snap. 
for the value. You get it? So zero. So now I can just simply copy this one and then link that one to the angle, angle N. Okay. And then for the radius, maybe I'll just uh, put this one as a panel and then I'll type here 20. But of course, that one can be changeable. And then right click and then I'll put here radius. So put that one on the radius start and then the radius. And lastly, for the length, so I can put, let's say, 50, 500. So that one is for the length. So again, it's good if you can rename this one to the uh, to the value. Let's say here, uh, hook, hook, uh, sorry hook start yeah and then here hook end just uh just put the naming huh? you can put the naming there huh? and then here on the on plane it will be it will also be good if we can put the on plane value so again the on plane value will be Double click, let's say negative, uh, uh, we put negative 200 and then 200. So at the moment we put here a zero and then put that one on plane. And the, yeah, here you type here on plane. The reason why I need to put this name so that when we use this one in our uh, uh, grasshopper component then we are able to identify it so this one is from plane and then the the start and end so maybe the start and end will be a uh, mm, negative uh, 500 to 500 so start and end okay and then number of bars so here you can type here to uh, 10 oh sorry 3 or 2 to uh, uh, 300 number of bars spacing same thing 50 to uh, let's say uh, 800 you have 800 okay so but again it, it's uh, since this one is a slider you can you can put and then also the uh, uh, spacing method spacing method is 1 to 4 so as you can see here no no it's 0 to 7 so 1 to 8 so meaning here you put 0 and then to 7 so that one is only for the spacing type okay and then if you want to do the exclusion so there's also an option here so one two three four so you need to put a one two three four here so one two, four all right so now you specify already your uh then here you can just simply group this group and then you type here g and then uh, 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 rebar. Let's say rebar one. Okay, so that's uh, the uh, that's the rebar properties. All right. So for the uh, last step, uh, what we need to do is to link uh the uh, this model object to to our rebar group if you notice i have the part the shape and the range so for the part i need to link this uh, model object to the part so select this one and then uh move here 
select uh, link to the part and then the line this line okay this line is the range so we need to link that range by a line so i have the uh, the object the the range and now the shape so for the shape you will notice that here this is the uh, this is the shape yeah so here you can see that this is the shape if you click on this one that is the geometry so we need to link that one to the shape here and there you go so as you can see it will follow the geometry of this particular beam okay so that's all for uh, for this uh, basic uh, setup of the reinforcement okay using the grasshopper using the rebar group in the grasshopper